Okay. And we'll be all set there. Welcome to the Cartridge Filter Market uh, webinar this morning. I'm Bob McElvain, and we'll be discussing the uh, cartridge market, and we will be focusing on some examples of uh, determining market share and the importance of market share in our market reports as, first of all, a way to accurately determine the market, and separately, uh, certainly all the suppliers uh, need to know where they stand, where their competitors stand, and uh, not only for the market in general, but for non-woven membrane cartridges, et cetera, et cetera, and, uh, and then also by the um, product itself. So once you have that kind of market share information, uh, you have a, a much better idea how to approach the uh, market and uh, how to deal with your with your competitors, certainly. So we're, we're gonna be going through the media and conferences as examples here, and then we will be getting into the details of the cartridge filter report, and then uh, we'll end up with a, a market program uh, overview and then the semiconductors as an example. But let's start with WefTech. It's coming up in a couple of uh, weeks, and it's a very important uh, exhibition for uh, many filtration companies and certainly for uh, the uh, filtration companies uh, selling macro filtration strainers and uh, automatic backwash filters. It's not a very large market for the uh, pe people that sell the cartridges, which is, is part of what we're talking about here. This is a, an $18 billion market uh, for cartridges worldwide, of which the municipal wastewater cartridge uh, uh, market in the US is only 67 million. So it's a very, very small market. You see people like uh, Paul, for instance, that isn't even gonna be an exhibitor this year, although their um, Danaher will be with, uh, with Hawk and several other divisions. So the, um, uh, the market is, is small, but uh, it is important for uh, relatively few uh, companies. And uh, so the uh, the market, as you can see, breaks out. The big markets are membrane cartridges and non-woven cartridges. So let's focus for a few minutes on Harmsco. Uh, they were founded in 1958 and they have a, a cartridge filter combined with a, a cyclone uh, separator so they can uh, deal with some of the higher solids. And uh, they're one of the few uh, cartridge exhib exhibitors, as we'll see uh, shortly here, and they've uh, they've grown uh, from their U.S. base, and they do have some activities overseas, uh, distributors overseas, and it describes the company describes itself as a market leader in the water filtering industry. Uh, again, wastewater is uh, not that larger percent even of its markets, uh, even though uh, it does, it's an exhibitor every year at WEFTEC. So let's just kind of go into some of the mathematics. Uh, we believe that uh, the Harmsco sales are around $30 million a year and that they have 100 employees. And so that their, their sales would be around $300,000 per employee. Uh, we would guess to make that their municipal wastewater sales could be around a, a million dollars worldwide, and at least 70% of that, or 700,000, would be for U.S. wastewater plants. And all of these sales would be the non-woven uh, uh, cartridges. So, so their, the market share would be less than 3% of the 26 million non-woven a market. The reason that the market share would be small is that many of the competitors selling cartridges into this market are not selling for process filtration, which is where Harmsco uh, is involved in, with larger cartridges, but they're selling for ancillary processes such as purifying uh, treatment chemicals, for an example. So the um, if, if, if a, a and more and more of the wastewater plants now are generating uh, uh, steam, 
uh, by combusting uh, biomass and then uh, uh, either exporting some of that energy or using it uh, uh, in-house. So this opens up a lot of uh, small cartridge uh, opportunities for those that are involved in uh, ultra-pure water and boiler feed water. But again, that wouldn't be a market that uh, Harmsco would be pursuing. So as a result, Harmsco might have as much as 30% of the process treatment applications uh, using non-cleanable, non-woven cartridges, again, for the U.S. wastewater industry. Now, keep in mind that there's also a membrane cartridge segment. And uh, uh, this, this, again, would be uh, more applicable to the steam applications and ultra-pure water and, and treatment, uh, some of the treatment chemicals where you need ultra-purity. There are also strainer opportunities in wastewater. And these are filters, strainers that by almost definition are uh, not that efficient, 100 microns or more, use screen, screens, et cetera. Although there's starting to be a blurring of these uh, uh, definitions as uh, some of the strainer people have cleanable strainers and they're using centered metal and they're getting down uh, in the uh, efficiency ranges where cartridges are normally used. Now, the, uh, the McElvain company has another report on macro filtration. And macro filtration does include automatic backwash filters. And there are a lot of automatic backwash filter exhibitors at uh, Weftech, including Amiad, who has a significant uh, sales of cleanable cartridges, of which some is in the wastewater market. The, um, the, the sales worldwide of the, uh, of the automatic backwash filters are uh, in the neighborhood of uh, uh, seven, seven or 800 million, as you, about 800 million, as you can see here. And of that, the uh, NAFTA is around 120 million. And the uh, portion of that that's in wastewater is, uh, is even much smaller than that. But anyway, that's another aspect that Harmsco is not involved in, although they would be competing uh, with those filters, uh, particularly where the solids are not that excessive and uh, a non-cleanable uh, filter can be used. So the um, an, another way to, to look at this thing, uh, it, it, to, to look at market share to make sure that those numbers look are reasonable, you have to ask yourself, why is Harmsco willing to spend all the money for uh, a booth at Weftech every uh, year? And the answer here might be that the uh, there are a lot of industrial water dischargers that come to Weftech. Uh, there is some... Uh, uh, municipal water. Some of the people that are making decisions for wastewater make them also for water. So it's possible that uh, they can identify a $3 million potential market that they could be reaching uh, per year um, for um, uh, that, that would generate $3 million in, in revenue for them a year from uh, all these different uh, uh, ancillary uh, industries, not just uh, the million or so from from the uh, municipal wastewater owners. So if they if they're generating as much as three million from the from the markets that would be served by Weftech, uh, they probably are spending somewhere in the neighborhood of three hundred thousand dollars for per year for commissions and um, other promotional expenses to serve a three million dollar market. So an expenditure, you know, of thirty thousand dollars or something like that for Weftech uh, would be a reasonable uh, expenditure. So this is another double check. So at Weftech, if you go in under an exhibitor search just for cartridges, uh, you see that there's a li very limited number of uh, out of the eight hundred exhibitors, and uh, there are three and four hundred exhibitors of some of these other types of products, but. Here you only have a very limited number, and and one is a, a Chinese company, and uh, then you've got Harmsco that we've just uh, talked about here. Uh, then you have another uh, Chinese company, and then you have Miller uh, Lehman, who is uh, uh, basically uh, on on the on the edge of 
the cartridge definition, most of what they're doing, as you can see, is the self-cleaning disc filter, which would be uh, really part of the automatic backwash. And um, so they're actual, and then they have strainers and things as well. So they're not, you know, the cartridges would not be a big portion of their uh, offering. So this, I think, is a, um, an illustration of how you use the um, uh, WEFTEC uh, exhibitor information to uh, provide insights on the uh, market shares for the cartridge companies in the municipal wastewater industry. So the uh, other thing that uh, uh, I wanted to speak about in terms of the media is um, actually the uh, the uh, get this out of the way here the uh, uh, opportunities to work with the people that uh, are uh, publishing articles relative to uh, cartridge filters, and one of those is uh, filtration news. And so we're going to open up, uh, this is an article that's appearing uh, in Filtration News in the uh, present issue that's going to be uh, upcoming here anyway. And you can see that uh, we start out by talking about how big the cartridge, uh, liquid cartridge non-woven market is. So these would, this would really look, be looking at it from the media standpoint. But you can see that the uh, liquid cartridge is a major uh, end use for the non-woven uh, um, uh, suppliers. And so this is a, a, stanch, a substantial market in its uh, own right. So, so this is a, a good portion of that 9 billion for, uh, for filtration uh, non-woven will be uh, in the liquid filtration in the cartridge uh, area here. The, um, um, Moving on then to the um, whole philosophy of um, pursuing this market, we do believe that uh, that there's the, going to be the uh, practice of the four A's, which uh, are the knowledge needs of alerts, answers, analysis, and advancement. And magazines such as Filtration News uh, are a way to alert your potential clients relative to your products in the cartridge area. It would be particularly good for those people who are supplying the replacement cartridges in, in the media, but it would also be relevant for those who are uh, selling the full uh, cartridges. And uh, Filtration News does have a, uh, a whole uh, initiative in China. They've got a... Uh, um, WeChat uh, webinar system over there, and they have a printed magazine in Chinese, which is kind of uh, unusual for a non-Chinese uh, uh, company. And uh, we go in there and, and, and go into this particular article with a whole concept of, uh, of a market program, which I'll get into in a, a few minutes uh, and skip that for a few minutes here. And in addition to the media, of course, you do have uh, the conferences, and in particular, in the case of uh, cartridges, the American Filtration Society, and of course, the International Filtration Side Society are uh, good opportunities for that sort of of uh, involvement. So the um, relative to market share and things too, it is um, particularly uh, illuminating to see what companies do uh, uh, advertise in filtration news, who, who is a exhibitor at the conferences. The AFS has its own conference, but then the non-woven society, uh, our group also has a conference that uh, has a lot of cartridge people uh, displaying, most, mostly the cartridge media when it comes to the uh, uh, the non-woven certainly, or to the non-woven society, I should say. Uh, in terms of the cartridges themselves, 
Filtration and uh, Separation magazine uh, has a lot of uh, focus on the total cartridges and the, the processes. And this is a, a magazine that uh, is, is published out of the UK, but is distributed around the world. And uh, they do have blogs with uh, the alerts that, that certainly help you alert your customers to uh, the opportunities. And the, um, the, the, the magazine has uh, a, an, a, an ability, as, as does Filtration News, for you to go in and or for an end user to go in and pull up uh, information from the archives from all the issues and so forth. And what we uh, we did in this particular article is to show how the, um, uh, the, the decisions about the wine market particularly can be uh, made from uh, the past articles in Filtration News and of course this is a this is an article that's appearing in the uh, present issue, but we point out that one of the past uh, issues of filtration and separation had this detailed analysis of, of wine filtration at a, a European winemaker called Hubert uh, Sect. And if you go into the article, it goes into pre-filtration and final filtration, and um, the uh, the supplier of the uh, cartridges for that particular application was Eaton, and they did a preliminary uh, survey, which is uh, interesting from the standpoint that they basically are demonstrating knowledge about the process, and so they were actually able to offer not just a cartridge but uh, a number of different cartridges for uh, pre-filtration, the product filtration. And then for regeneration, for the liquid that's needed to regenerate the filters. So they added, uh, so they, they approached the customer with a solution, not just with the, the filters. And so in terms of lowest total cost of ownership validation, uh, Eaton was able to claim that they had the expert analysis that when they supplied a complete solution, uh, they were the lowest total cost option as opposed to someone, to, to a group of uh, suppliers that would be supplying cartridges without that understanding as to how exactly that they were going to be used. And so classification of the uh, filter applications is uh, necessary by both the vendor, of course, and the supplier in the case of Eden here. They understood these processes and et cetera. And then they uh, get, got into the potential for product design and they were able to show the benefits of wrapped cartridges versus pleated cartridges. And of course the classifications that are needed in all these things are the initial cost, efficiency, safety, life, even safety in this with this potential of CO2 being generated by uh, particles that are not uh, adequately uh, uh, captured, uh, then uh, then you've got a safety problem there. And of course, uh, taste would be a, a problem when you, potential problem when you have a process uh, filter. So these are the kinds of things that uh, can be uh, communicated in uh, uh, through the uh, magazines. So the um, the article does go on to to indic indicate some of the experience we've had in analyzing the uh, the wine uh, industry, and the uh, analysis then goes on to how big the market is in the uh, food industry, and particularly for for the um, wine type uh, products. And you can see that of the um, total 300 million, uh, this is really just 10% of the total filtration expenditures by the food industry. Uh, the US and France account for 25% of the world's wine consumption. Uh, Italy, Germany, and China 
account for another 25%. The top 20 companies pursue, uh, consume most of the wine and the top uh, 10 winemakers will spend 39 million for filtration and separation equipment uh, next year. And you can see Gallo is the top purchaser with plants in various different countries. And it will be spending $8.1 million approximately on cartridges. And uh, the others fall behind it, uh, but even the uh, 10th place a purchaser will be spending over $2 million a year on uh, cartridges. So you know, these are large enough numbers that they warrant a, a special uh, sales campaign for, for each, each one of those. So this is a sort of information that is appearing in that uh, filtration and separation uh, magazine. What I'd like to do now would be to go on to our cartridge filter uh, market report. The uh, one of the obviously big uh, benefits of the re of the report itself is instant uh, forecasting uh, uh, by a search here, and so you can search by any industry, and you can see all these different uh, industries: healthcare, pharmaceutical, power, wastewater, etc. Uh, you can do it by a subject. So we have carbon, membrane, metal, non-woven, and string wound. And then you can do it um, uh, by any region, you know, even our, our, our country. So you can go in by country and look at just the, you know, just the market in, in Germany. And then, then you can look at it by industry in Germany. And, uh, or you can look at it by product. And also, you can go back all the, all the way if you want to get very detailed. You would go in under forecasts again here. <clears throat> yeah, I got myself out of it, so I'm going to take a second to get back in again here. But you can take um, a particular industry, uh, such as pharmaceutical. And you can take a particular subject such as membrane uh, cartridges. And then you can pick a particular uh, country such as China. And uh, then you have the forecast just for that particular product in that particular industry in that particular uh, country. So it, uh, as a result, there's over 50,000 forecasts. The um, lots of technical information in there as uh, well, as well as market information on all the different industries. We have uh, uh, even a number of separate websites uh, by each, uh, each industry. And uh, we get into uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the details here, for instance, uh, uh, you get the, the markets in bottled beverages and carbonated drinks and and so forth here, volumes and individual company treatment analyses. Uh, we've go, even gone into interviews uh, about, uh, uh, for instance, what uh, a gentleman at Coca-Cola is uh, thinking about use of cartridges versus some of the other things that they're, UV and other, other uh, things that they're doing. And... Uh, so we um, you have a lot of that kind of detail in cosmetics and on and on and on here. And electronics industry, we'll get into that a little bit uh, later here, the food, food industry, the metals industry. And then we would have uh, detailed uh, sorts of things there as to uh, in, in the metal industry, you would have in, ta in tank uh, uh, cartridge systems, uh, for instance, and uh, you know what would be the cost of those and the flow rates and so forth for that type of application. In in all these different industries, we also have industry analyses. So now we're on a whole different website, which is one of our subsidiary websites for the cartridge report, but it also serves some of our other reports. 
but you can go into the plant database for Europe or the United States and you can uh, search by state and you can see for California, for example, you know, all the different um, uh, metalworking plants that, that would be in the state of uh, Cali California. They are, um, and, and then we do, we get into a, an overview there as well and some of the other things. Uh, so you can actually go into specifics such as uh, metal industry plating dischargers and who, who all those people might be. And uh, are the um, the uh, plating and polishing uh, uh, filter uh, operators that have uh, TRI uh, problems? Uh, and then again, this would be an overlap, some of the same things, but we have this in a couple of different uh, uh, databases that we've downloaded from various different uh, sites. So these are the types of things that help us provide forecasting right down to the individual uh, uh, company level. So let's let's go back to the cartridge report again and um, look at the uh, company profiles and financials. So what we're going to be putting a big push on uh, in the uh, monthly basis from now on is to update all these uh, uh, market share numbers. And the, uh, the market share numbers, uh, you know, would have this kind of information. And we're going to be expanding this for uh, regionally as well as by industry. So basically what Brita's sales would be by industry and what Clark Core, which of course is now uh, Parker and what uh, what their sales are in healthcare with cartridges and metals and electronics and and then what percentage of that is Americas versus Europe versus Asia and we have done a number of these studies over the years uh, most of them have, have actually been done for uh, individual clients but uh, in order to keep it up to date continually. And to do it in more depth, we are undertaking the very substantial uh, uh, work that will be required uh, to provide this kind of information on a uh, current basis. So there's a, uh, there are intelligence systems and uh, you know other other aspects uh, of the uh, cartridge filter market report, and it is updated on a uh, continuing basis. I'd like to, to move on to a uh, the, the market program at this point in time. And the um, market program that we offer is the continuous uh, uh, detailed forecasting of not only the cartridge filter opportunities, but the uh, uh, by you know by country and product by by individual cartridge purchaser. And the more that you can focus and ob obtain the information on what the potential is at a particular company, the less need there is to get sales leads uh, for that company, because you can predict, obviously, with cartridges, if you know uh, what their market is, you can anticipate, obviously, they're going to be spending so much per year for cartridges, and you can work a program around them and not wait for uh, a sales lead that somebody's going to buy cartridges. Now, the uh, return on investment for uh, for the very largest companies, where you've got millions of dollars of cartridges a year, the cost to determine the uh, non-woven purchases for that particular company are pretty small, and so you have a return on investment that could be you know twenty thousand to one for getting that kind of information, and it. You know, even for the very smaller ones, the cost of getting that information is pretty small compared to the return on investment. And the way you pursue those uh, customers is almost a pyramid where you should even have custom websites for your top prospects, certainly direct sales program for your large prospects. 
and a uh, at least a program to uh, identify the purchases of the small uh, companies and figure out a way such as the uh, you know which how much can you invest in conferences and media and which media do you use if it's a wine company like that then uh, a filtration and separation might might be one of the most appropriate uh, magazines uh, for you there, or processing magazine or something like that. And the uh, so we get into some uh, other aspects of this, uh, which is that the uh, serviceable obtainable market for cartridges is really a function of where you can demonstrate the lowest total cost of ownership, or what we call LTCOV, which is lowest total cost of ownership validation. Uh, you can have a market in China, but if you can't service it, uh, then it isn't part of the serviceable, obtainable market. Or if your prices are much higher than the competition, uh, then uh, there is not a uh, a market there as well. You know, on the other hand, with the pharmaceutical uh, and chemical companies all having uh, facilities in these other countries, uh, many of them would use the uh, international suppliers of cartridges. That's particularly true of the uh, semiconductor industry as well, and, and of course, as, as well as pharmaceutical. And we'll show you that uh, in a minute. I won't go into all the, the sales programs because they are up on our website, but part of the whole fundamental um, concept here is less investment on sales leads, which is really more of a haphazard way to approach a market and more on the uh, forecasting of the individual uh, purchases, uh, the also the forecasting of what the competitor market shares and things are so the obtainable market uh, is a function of uh, also of how dominant some of your competitors are and uh, you know what the quality of those products that that they have as well and so you've got the uh, uh, some some other data that i won't go into here other than there is a whole new uh world out there because of uh, IIoT and remote O&M. When you consider that 3M for a 10 or $15 furnace filter is able to install on that a uh, Bluetooth enabled pressure sensor on just a cheap uh, furnace filter for that's sold through uh, uh, your hardware stores. Uh, but if you buy one of those with the sensor on it and sign up for the program, that messages relative to the pressure drop across that filter are sent uh, to 3M. And at the proper time when the pressure uh, is appropriate for replacement, they send uh, an email to uh, Amazon who delivers a new filter for you. So the opportunities um, in the future here uh, for the continuous monitoring and replacement of cartridges is is huge. And if this all works for a 10 or $15 furnace filter, consider uh, the economics when it comes to a, a, a filter that costs several hundred dollars or maybe even a thousand dollars or more. So you've got right to win strategies that we get into as well. And the uh, some of the more innovative things that go on in the market. But then I'm, I'm kind of just moving on. And uh, this is not all cartridge. Some of it is. But how we're figuring the uh, market for uh, some some huge operators like Sinopec in China. I mean, they're spending six hundred and seven million dollars for for pumps. And I'm sure their cartridge numbers are way up there in the 50 or 60 million dollars as uh, as well and of course BASF uh, uh, you know out of uh, Germany's got plants all over the world and we're even also looking at it by uh, a type of product so 
somebody like BASF may be making chlorine, or Dow certainly is making chlorine at uh, at one plant, uh, but making other products there as well. And like Wacker uh from in Germany uh, uses uh, chlorine eight or nine different times. But um, for that initial use, there, there's about a $300 million pump market. And again, probably in cartridges, it's in the neighborhood of 40 or $50 million just for the uh, initial uh, manufacture of chlorine. And here's uh, food industry examples again here. This happens to be pump, but it could easily be the, the cartridges with the market shares for uh, purchases by the very large uh, Anheuser-Busch, which would be, uh, uh, and Coca-Cola, which would be very large purchasers. And then people like ConAgra, who would be somewhat smaller uh, purchasers. And uh, here, here, for instance, is a, uh, uh, going back to municipal wastewater, uh, here is a company, BWG, which is operating 400 different uh, uh, wastewater plants around the world. So that is another uh, opportunity, certainly, is to work with these large multinational companies like Veolia and Suez and so forth. And then again, to work with uh, a BASF, this happens to be their wastewater pump expenditures, but um, you can break out for each one of their plants what the cartridge uh, a filter a market would be as well. And the uh, power industry, we, we back up a lot of these numbers with actually uh, tracking of, for instance, every gas turbine and every uh, coal-fired power plant. And then we get into uh, uh, each type of power plant in, in, as well. So we get into the uh, forecasts of all these different uh, filtration and pumps and uh, even variable speed drives and so forth for each one of the major uh, nuclear producers as well. And then we get into some of the process like uh, things. So FGD wouldn't happen to use uh, cartridges, except it might uh, use it for some of the treatment chemicals that are that are used in, a, in the FGD system wastewater uh, control. And so this is that. Uh, type of thing. And the uh, this gets into the semiconductor industries, which is the one I wanted to kind of end up with here, where the semiconductor uh, uh, companies such as Intel are actually uh, purchasing filters on a worldwide basis. And there's a very careful analysis of every ultra pure water uh, cartridge and so the opportunities to work with the largest around the world is uh, very substantial. Uh, one caution I might have is that you can't just take the revenues of these companies and figure out how much their um, their cartridge purchases are. Uh, some of them don't even have fab uh, fabs, and then people then then others like TSMC uh, is the largest. Uh, uh, fab only operator in the world, and so they're they're spending, uh, as we can see here on cartridges, they're spending uh, 52 uh, million dollars a year on cartridges, and and they're really uh, what what they call a fab rather than a complete finished semiconductor manufacturer. So the uh, cartridge uh, market in semiconductors is 475 million. But um, uh, for the so, but the purchases of the top five companies are a pretty good percentage of that uh, total. So the um, um, uh, focus on the Intel's and the Samsungs and TSMCs and so forth is uh, very, very important. The um, the market is served by a lot of these companies. Uh, such as Danaher that are into uh, cartridges as well as other things. Uh, and so that is an interesting aspect that, that needs to be evaluated as well. So the uh, program that we offer uh, is really based 
uh, really it was the cartridge filter report as a foundation. And we would, you know, welcome the opportunity to talk to you more about that. Uh, you can purchase the cartridge filter report online. It's uh, less than uh, less than four thousand dollars, and it is updated on a continuing basis. Uh, I'd like to thank you for spending the time today to learn about our cartridge filter uh, report and the whole program that we uh, have for uh, evaluating uh, strategies, competitors, and uh, pursuing uh, the and use market markets in a more cost-effective manner. And this is Bob McElvain signing off for today.